All right guys, so what's up? Welcome back to another video. And today we're gonna go over five things I wish I knew when I started fly fishing. So I'm a fly fisherman. I fish probably 100 plus days a year now. Um, but it wasn't all that long ago that I did a lot of spin fishing. And I still do spin fish from time to time just for the fun of it. So I feel like I'm in a somewhat unique position to be able to tell you guys kind of five things I wish I knew when I started fly fishing that would help me get to where I am today a lot quicker. So without further ado, Let's hop into the first thing I wish I knew when I started fly fishing. Before we get started, my intent with this video is to have something that new fly anglers can use for years to come. So if you're someone who's been fly fishing for a while, leave a comment and let people know what's something you wish you knew when you started fly fishing. And then like a few comments that you think were interesting or important. That way new anglers can read through comments and learn something that's beyond this video because I'm sure I forgot a few things. All right, let's start out with number one, flies. There are three types of flies, streamers, dry flies, and nymphs. Dry flies sit on top of the water, nymphs are below the water, and streamers imitate bait fish. Jig streamers and woolly buggers, you can work exactly how you'd work a jig for any other species of fish and are easy to pick up as a beginner. As far as dry fly goes, if you have a stimulator, caddis, and parachute atoms, you're set for dry flies, at least out east. And if you're out west, a griffith snad is always handy. There are a few basic nymphs like the pheasant tail, hare's ear, prince nymph, and rainbow warrior that catch fish anywhere in the world. Fly sizes are simple. The smaller the number, the bigger the fly. For example, a size 12 fly is much bigger than a size 18, and so on. The most normal sizes for flies range from around 12 to size 20, with anything lower than 12 being really big, and anything higher than 20 being really small. So I still remember when I first started fly fishing, being so, ridiculously overwhelmed with how many fly choices there were and not even really knowing what I was looking for in a fly or what flies I needed or really anything like that but I can promise you guys that if you look at those if you look up those basic fly patterns that I just mentioned you will catch fish anywhere in the country all of those flies I've caught fish on out east I've caught fish on out west, even in some of the most pressured tailwaters in the country. So, if you have those flies in a few different sizes, you'll almost certainly catch fish. I'd also like to add into this that fly fishing can be a very confusing sport, but it also doesn't have to be. And that's probably one of the most beautiful things about fly fishing is if you're new to it, you can make it really simple and still catch some awesome fish. But the further you get into fly fishing, the more difficult you can make it on yourself purposely just to kind of learn some new things and challenge yourself, which is part of the reason I like it and part of the reason that once I switched to fly fishing, I never really went back. Number two, fly selection isn't that important. Everybody talks about fly choice, but it's such a small piece of the equation. It is far more important that you get your fly in front of the fish than it is that you have exactly matched what they're eating. For example, if you don't see any fish rising, don't throw a dry fly and expect to have a killer day on the water. There are obviously exceptions to everything, but generally if you have the flies I mentioned in the fly section in the beginning of the video, you can and will catch fish anywhere, regardless of what is hatching and what isn't. And if you are struggling and feel like you do need to match the hatch, flip over a rock and match your flies with what you see crawling around, or stand for a second and look at what bugs are flying around the river. So I'll be honest with you guys, one of the best pieces of advice I got when I first started fly fishing was it really doesn't matter what fly you use, it's far more important that you get the fly down to where the fish are or that you imitate uh, generally where the fish are eating. So as long as you have a nymph that's getting down to where the fish are, there's a high probability the fish are going to eat it. Unless you're fishing very, very, very pressured tailwaters or something like that, it really doesn't matter what you're throwing. Oh, speaking of fish, it's my first rookie of the day right there. Oh, well guys, that's pretty cool. Midway through talking about how fly selection doesn't matter. When I catch a brook trout throwing a caddis fly and there's no caddis coming off right now, which is a perfect example of fish really not caring what you're throwing. But I know the fish are looking up right now because it's hatch season. So a lot of times fish are opportunistic and they may not think, oh, there's no caddis popping off right now, but I'm still gonna eat it because that's a pretty big meal. Would you relax, buddy? So there he is. I'm gonna go ahead and release him. That's a decent sized little brookie there. Thanks for playing, buddy. All right, guys, hopefully I'll catch one out of here. And if I can catch a fish out of here, 
I'll give you the most important lesson of all. So I think I see one actually. Let's see if he'll eat. That's a good cast. Ooh, yes, sir. Oh, buddy, come here. All right, let's talk about the most important lesson of all. This isn't a very big fish, but the lesson will still stand. And that is that if you're trout fishing, especially for wild or native trout, you want to get your wet, your hands wet. Now, the reason that's so important is because these little guys have slime coating on them, which essentially protects them from getting infections and disease and stuff like that. So if you don't keep your hands wet, then these little fish won't survive even if they swim away just fine. The other thing is, is I have rubber coated nets. Um, these are almost essential when you're trout fishing for the same reason as wetting your hand is essential, is that uh, if you don't use rubber coated nets, you're gonna knock the slime coating off the fish and you're gonna hurt them. Another thing that's worth mentioning, don't lip your trout. Uh, if you lip fish, you can break their jaw. And once again, even though they might swim away just fine, if you break their jaw, then they're not gonna be able to feed in the future and they will eventually die. So if you're gonna come out here and catch and release these little things, you wanna do a couple pretty easy things. One is, uh, if you catch one, release it quickly. If you have to take a picture, then take a picture. I take a picture all the time. It doesn't hurt them, but it's another one I just missed. But if you're gonna take the pictures, do it quickly. Don't mess around for too long unnecessarily and stuff like that. Um, and, oh, 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 oh. Sorry, there's a fish following my fly. I'm gonna try to cast one further back. Pause the lesson for a second. Oh, the fly fish you stayed over there, I'll draw a fly. There it is. Oh, it's a big fish, boys. It's a big fish. Just yeet him over the rock. Oh yeah, nice healthy male brookie it looks like. Wow, that's a sweet looking fish. Well, I'm stuck on myself and everything else. Got too much line out. I watched him eat and then I caught him. Right in the middle of my catch and release lesson which this guy will work perfectly for. But that's a solid native brook trout. I mean, that's a big old fish for this little creek. I'll go ahead and release him real quick. See you, buddy. So see what I did there? You hold the fish gently, keep them in the water at all times in the net. And then when you're ready to release them or get a picture, you hold them up, take the picture, and then release them immediately with wet hands. And although that fish might have a little bit of a sore lip, He's gonna be completely fine and I'll be able to catch him in a year or someone else will come up here and they'll be able to catch and release the same fish, which is really why we're all out here is to come out and catch some fish and have some fun. Number three, trash flies aren't trash. People just don't like how well they work. Trash flies are flies like squirmy worms, mop flies, greeny weenies, or an egg. If you don't have these trash flies in your box, then you're missing out on some of the best fishing you can have on the water. These flies just flat out catch fish. And when you're new, that's important. I guess the lesson for number three is just have fun and catch some fish. There is no right or wrong way to fly fish, and catching fish as a new fly fisherman is the most important thing you need to learn if you're ever going to stick with it. Alright guys, so this one's pretty simple in my opinion, but that's that trash flies are not trash, and everybody should have trash flies in their box. It's probably, in my opinion, some of the easiest ways to catch fish, especially, at least for me personally. I really like a mop fly. I love a greeny weenie for native brook trout. And I think that not using those flies or not throwing those flies in some scenarios is borderline stupid behavior as I immediately get stuck in the tree behind me. Here's another tip for you. You're gonna get stuck, just get used to it. <laughs> Anyways, what I was saying before I got stuck in the tree is that you should have some of those flies in your box. Use the trash flies, catch some fish, and have fun with it. This little pocket here looks tasty. That ought to be a fish. There it is. Oh, another good fish, man. This time of the year, dude, I'm telling you, the brook trout love to come out. The bigger fish start feeding because there starts to be a little bit more, a uh, little bit more bug activity. As you can see right now, we have like a little mayfly hatch coming off, it looks like, of some sort. And I'm just throwing an ant because once again, as I said earlier in the video, the type of fly doesn't really matter. Um, if you really want to get into the nitty, nitty gritty, 
a lot of times size and profile is far more important than the actual pattern itself and we're catching fish like crazy and i'm having a fun time out here hopefully teaching you guys a thing or two at least the new guys about catching some fly uh, catching some fish on the fly number four if you're new use an indicator rig or a jig streamer an indicator is just a fancy way of saying bobber and if you drop a squirmy worm below an indicator you're essentially bobber fishing with a worm if you drop another fly down below that such as a pheasant tail then you have double the chance of hooking up this is a great way to catch a few fish and get the hang of casting fighting a fish and landing it which is essential when you're new to fly fishing jig streamers are another way to get started just because they're so similar to jigging for any other species of fish once you've caught some fish and get the hang of fly fishing, you can start trying new rigs and getting more particular with how you catch fish, if you want to. All right guys, let's move on to how to actually catch the fish now that we've kind of talked about flies for a second. So by far the easiest way to catch a fish on the fly if you've never done it before, and it was seriously the first way that I ever caught a fish on the fly, is just to throw an indicator rig. Indicator rig is simply just an indicator or bobber holding up two flies. The first fish that I ever caught on the fly was an indicator rig with a pheasant tail and a squirmy worm and I think I caught like 20 fish that day on that little combo. So that is for sure the easiest way to catch a fish if you've just never done it before because it's literally just throwing like live bait below a bobber is essentially what's going on there and it just flat out works. If you're fishing small streams like I am right now by far the easiest thing to do is just throw a dry fly and not really worry about it too much because I mean why make it more complicated than it has to be? Number five, what should you and what shouldn't you spend money on? A great example I like to use is Tippet. Tippet is just a thinner diameter fishing line and it's slightly overrated. Tippet is theoretically designed so that you can throw higher pound tests with smaller diameter line and spook less fish. The sizing looks complicated, but it's not that bad. I'll throw up a general Tippet to pound test conversion on the screen. Generally when you're fly fishing you'll use 3x to 6x depending on the day with the most common being 4 and 5x. But if you're throwing a streamer you have no real reason to use tippet and honestly for a lot of nymphing and dry fly scenarios tippet isn't needed. Why does this matter? It matters because tippet is far more expensive than regular fishing line. For years I used regular fluorocarbon line for streamers and had 4 pound test monofilament in my bag for nymphing and dry fly fishing. It's just so much cheaper to use regular fishing line and for the most part it doesn't matter. In the same realm of tippet is store bought tapered leaders. In my opinion these are the easiest way to get on the water quickly and be effective. A lot of fly fishermen choose to make their own leaders, but at the end of the day as a new fly fisherman it can be overwhelming quickly. So just go buy a store bought leader and have some fun with it. Oop, just saw a dry fly eat. Let me cast in there and catch this fish real quick before I start on what I was about to say. If I can get in there, I'll catch this fish. There we go. It's about as good as it's going to get, I think. There it is. Whoa, don't hit the rocks. Well, that's a perfect example of fly fishing. You get the fish in there, you almost guarantee to catch. But sometimes getting the cast in there ain't the easiest thing on earth. And that is a beautiful example of a native brookie right there, ladies and gentlemen. What an awesome fish. Thanks, buddy. Anyways, what I was going to say before I saw that fish eat a dry fly is that I think we should talk about what you should and shouldn't spend your money on in fly fishing. And I mentioned in the example that tippet, in my opinion, is slightly overrated. For example, if you're going to be, I don't know, streamer fishing, Sometimes tippet isn't even the best option in my opinion, because if you throw tippet, there's a higher probability of fish being able to break your line. But then there's times like this right now where I'm throwing 5X tippet, because if I threw regular fishing line, I would more than likely not catch very many fish because they'd see the line. But let's go ahead and mention a few other things that we probably don't need to spend a lot of money on. One of them is a fly reel. I think fly reels are completely overrated unless you're catching steelhead or I don't know if you're saltwater fishing, I guess. But I think if you're saltwater fishing, you probably already clicked off this video. So we're not going to talk about it much. But what you should spend money on, in my opinion, there's a couple things. One is a good fly rod. A good fly rod, in my opinion, works wonders when you're out fishing, which is pretty self-explanatory. But the better the rod, the easier it is going to be to cast more than likely. Having said that, you don't have to spend a bunch of money on a fly rod. It's just something that is nice to have. Another thing is fly line. Fly line, I think, 
is way more important than the fly reel. A good fly line will, once again, enable you to cast a lot easier. And as you can see, like with what I'm doing right now, these reels do little more than hold the fly line. But the rod is constantly casting the fly line and the line is obviously constantly casting. So like for these brook trout right now, I'm throwing a very thin diameter line so that when my line hits the water, it doesn't spook the fish, which you would think is pretty self-explanatory and it is, but it's something that I think, ooh, where's a nice brook trout? Get this guy in the net if I can. Oh yeah, that's a real nice fish. Ooh, interrupted me. I only get interrupted for a nice eight, nine inch brook trout every day of the week. That's cool. Anyway, using a slightly more expensive rod can help out and using expensive fly line can help out. But beyond that, it becomes much less important. So those are five things I wish I knew when I started fly fishing. These are fly fishing specific. In other words, I didn't go into the ins and outs of how to catch trout because when I started fly fishing, I had already been trout fishing for years. If you want more specific videos like this one, let me know in the comments below. Oh, and of course, if you have something I missed, leave a comment and let others know something you wish you knew when you started fly fishing. Thanks for watching.